after a ballistic missile launch in November, Kim Jong-un now claims his nuclear weapons program is complete. This scene follows last night's alt-right protest with hundreds marching at the University of Virginia while waving tiki torches. 58 people now dead, more than 500 people wounded in a horrific shooting. There'll be more dark days to come for so many people who've lost everything. Hi, it's Thomas. It's 9-11, I'm on Wall Street. Fortunately, not that 9-11, but in this crazy day of climate change, wealth inequality, civil unrest, things could happen at any moment. For your survivalism has been kind of limited to the DIY stuff. Kind of people who have, you know, enough spare time to build things like bomb shelters, go bags, as well as just think about the myriad things that could happen to us, like zombie apocalypse, terrorist attack, anything like that. But now the 1% are getting us quit. And, as with everything they do, they're getting someone else to do it for them. You got that tie, so stay away from them. No, keep the gas off. The city's on fire. Exactly. The wheel is off the bus. The speedboat I'm currently taking across the Hudson at 50 knots belongs to Plan B Marine, a company that keeps a fleet of similar craft docked around Manhattan, fueled up and ready to go. Its clients pay up to $6,000 a month to lease their own personal boats so they can escape the island with a quickness should the proverbial shit go down, or hit the fan, or just happen. And watch out for this weight. Yeah. It's gonna be yeah. big. You're gonna wanna pull back. Pull your throttle back. Oh, sorry, did that exactly wrong. Yeah. Yeah. So the emergency airplane part aren't necessarily nuclear apocalypse. No, like we're it's... really against that whole theory of the zombie apocalypse right. and preppers. We're an insurance policy. Why do most of the clients who call you, why are they looking for this service? Some people, it's fear. They're afraid of something happening. It all relates back to September 11th. If something like that could happen, something just as bad could happen. Yeah. And they don't want to be in that position where they feel helpless. I remember like doing the blackout. The blackout was the biggest problem. Everyone comes out of the friend. subway. Yeah. All the lights are out, so now cars don't move, and the whole city's in gridlock. It's an eye opener when I speak to some uh, security people. Yeah. What they're worried about was something I never even thought of. Do you take that with a grain of salt? When you I talk do. to police. Okay, I do, yeah. but I'm an optimist, so. Yeah. An interesting market to be in as an optimist. I know. I, actually, I, it's yeah. a service I provide for other people, not myself. No? <laughs> but maybe my head is in the sand like other people, because things happen, yeah. and things have happened in the past. Once you've gotten out of the city, though, the next question is where do you go from there? I don't want to set the world on fire. not looking to leave the United States, but are looking to leave the uh, main trouble centers, which is basically anywhere where a lot of people live. You can uh, come out to one of the less populated districts, like here in South Dakota, on our way to uh, essentially a kind of like condominium complex of shelters called Vivos X Point. Desire. Shoes off? Yeah, we like to take shoes off, keep the floors nice and clean. What do you think? This is this is Swank. So this shelter was recently completed. We built it as a showroom for people to come walk through, touch and feel, and see how to do it. You know, the way this works is they come and they go and they build out their bunker over time and everybody's got different ideas and different plans and that's fine, we like that. But this one sold for $150,000 just for the improvements, plus the shelter at 25,000, so 175. And if you build it out yourself, it'd be about 50. You know, that's, that's very reasonable. Well, what do you yeah. get for 50,000 in the form of a, a condo or a cabin in the woods or whatever? Not much. Do you feel a sense of urgency with getting all these things done? Or do you feel like right now? Yes. And it's a big discussion. We were all having it yesterday. Yeah. All I can say is as a company, Vivos, we're doing the best we can, as fast as we can for as long as we can. Yeah to build as many shelters to protect as many people as possible. 
Check out the incredible entertainment room we have here for you guys. Incredible what you can do with a bunker. Vivos may market its shelters to middle class preppers, as evidenced by the IKEA meets CB2 furnishings of their show bunker. But an entire cottage industry has sprung up selling survival skills and resources to the sweetest demographic of all, the 1%. Dan Clark was a bodyguard for some of the corporate world's richest figures before starting Clark International, a security firm in Omaha, Nebraska, that teaches executives, famous actors, and other high net worth individuals how to protect themselves and get away from kidnappers, terrorists, assassins, and mobs of angry, low to no net worth individuals. Being in the position that you're in, you may find yourself where you actually have to defend yourself. And there's some fundamentals of self-defense that you should know and, and that uh, we're going to practice today. Front foot's going to go forward, back foot's going to follow. Just like that. That's really good, Thomas. Good. The, the people of high net worth, not only do they have the regular concerns as the average citizen of the random crime or run across the mentally ill, but the, the people of real high net worth, they need to be concerned as well as far as targeted crime. Oh, In recent years, have you noticed, uh, has there been an uptick in people uh, um, coming to you for service? Yes, absolutely so. I think it's a combination of several factors. I think it's a combination of terrorism. I think it's a combination of potentially being targeted. In addition to a little bit of the political unrest that's going on right now. From here, I'm exploding. Boom, 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 like that. And then I'm coming back online. Yeah. And when you get good enough, you make your own sound effects. Okay. <laughs> Part of Clark International's business model is keeping their roster of clients confidential. It's very good, Thomas. Okay. Which is always a selling point to the have-mores in society, who like to keep their private lives as private as possible, especially things like what they own and what they're afraid of. To wit, there's purportedly an entire scene of tech billionaires within the prepping community who've been buying up bolt hole properties in New Zealand and elsewhere, and which purportedly includes the likes of Peter Thiel, LinkedIn founder Reid Hoffman, Reddit founder Steve Huffman, guys it's safe to say are no dummies, especially when it comes to what they do with their capital. At least one tech tycoon, however, is spending his time and money trying to raise the alarm about the economic catastrophe looming in our wealth disparity gap, instead of just preparing to run for the hills in his new Tesla. Intuition about the future is the essence of good entrepreneurship. So what do I see in our future today? You ask, I see pitchforks, as in, angry mobs with pitchforks. I love, I love these mugs, by the way. You like our trickle-down mugs? Yeah. Oh, yeah, these are you guys. I yeah, of course them. we did. Trickle-down economics, making was... the rich richer and the poor poorer since forever. It's <laughs> cute. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote this piece for Politico a couple of years ago called The Pitchforks Are Coming For Us Politocrats. You know, just offered the basic argument, which is that if any society which becomes radically unequal either becomes a police state or devolves into revolution. There aren't any counterexamples to that, and that we should, we should try to avoid that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe there's plan B. In 1980, the top 1% of Americans got about 8% share of national income, and the bottom 50% of Americans got 17.7%. Fast forwarded to like 2007, top 1% had gone to almost 23% while the bottom 50% had fallen from 17 to like 11. Wow. All you have to do is take that trend, just imagine it goes for another 20 or 30 years. That arrangement does not resemble yeah. what we currently have. Democracy is gone, the normal economy is gone, you are living in some sort of weird feudalist hellscape. It's hard to believe that we're gonna be able to get the country back on track without some pretty crazy stuff going down. Crazy in what sense? What do you see as happening? I mean, I think that you're going to see a ton of social unrest play out over the next 10, 10 to 20 years. Do people still have contingency plans? I remember around the time at the WTO, there was a lot of talk about, like, you know, like Batman tunnels and stuff like that through the city or people. Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. Everybody, like, in my world, everybody's like, where are we going to go? The 
Raven Ridge Survival Condo was originally constructed as an intercontinental ballistic missile silo in the 60s. After its ICBM was taken out, the silo sat derelict for 40 years until developer Larry Hall bought it to make into a data center that could withstand the shockwave from a nuclear explosion. Then he had a change of heart and decided to convert his plans for a server farm into a shelter for the most precious data of all, human civilization. Oh. Hi. Thomas. Hello. Larry Hall, Thank welcome you. to the survival condo. Full-floor condo units at Ravens Ridge start at $2.5 million, for which you get not only unlimited food, water, electricity, and breathable, non-radioactive air, but as many creature comforts as you can fit into a 15-story hole in the ground. This is the dome. Then you have the mechanical level, medical security level. This is the dental chair. And then this is the exam room. We've got all this thing set up. Store level with hydroponics and aquaculture. We'll have tomatoes and lettuce and kale. And we also have music in here because plants respond to classical music. Then the residential levels are five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. It's about 940 square feet of living space in here. How many units are there total? Twelve. And are they all occupied or all yeah. sold? All yeah. spoken for? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Then there's a library and classroom. <gasps> this book's amazing. The exercise and spa level the theater and lounge, and then the pumps and storage. As talking with uh, owners, have you learned anything that has stoked or diminished your concern for an event happening sometime in the near future? Yeah, I've had a, a lot of new inquiries from very wealthy people. I guess what's interesting is that a lot of these people have um, a lot of money and political connections, and therefore I imply that they have access to information that I don't have access to and there's something bothering them yeah. that uh, makes them worried. So it's, it's made me, you know, think I'm on the right track. <laughs> so the whole place was engineered to make life normal here for an extended period of time. Yeah. And that's what makes this place so much more survivable. You know, people look at a bunker and they look at, the, oh, well, how much is it? And they, you just don't know what all goes into it. But this is not just a bunker. This is designed to make life normal for extended periods of time under the harshest of conditions. Do you ever look forward to, not the events leading to a situation where you're locked in, but the, the idea of being locked in and getting to use all this? No. How does it feel to put so much work into something you hope won't be used? It feels good because, it, again, it, it, and my owners have all said the same thing. It's a peace of mind. I have a plan, and if something bad happens, I know what I'm going to go do. And, and that's what people get, is peace of mind, you know, that if, if the unthinkable happens, that they've got a plan to keep life good for their family. The first bunker was uh, 54,000 square feet of living space. The new one is three times the size. It's 150,000 square feet. Are, are any of those sold yet, or? Half the units already are, are spoken for, so we're gonna hit the ground running pretty quick on that now.